one of our members was asking, how long does it take to see that shift on the scale when you're doing everything right? You're cutting down inflammatory food, you're eating wholesome food, you're trying to add more protein, etc., etc. So I'd like to use that opportunity to talk about calories, it's not the enemy, <laughs> but also about your metabolism and how you can support everything, your metabolic health and your fertility and still lose weight. And I know that so many of you have been conditioned to believe that you need to aggressively cut calories when you want to lose weight. But if you're doing it aggressively, it can worsen hormonal imbalances, it can slow down your metabolism and it can increase stress on the body. And what works for men doesn't work for us women in the same way. So when it comes to weight reduction, uh, especially when we're looking at our hormonal balance in the same time, it's not a quick process. It depends on multiple factors, including metabolic health. We're looking at insulin resistance, at inflammation, stress levels, and your nutrient status. If your body has been in a stressed and depleted or inflamed state for a very long time, this is my child outside. If you heard that, I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, if you're there in a very long time, it can, can take a while until you get there. So if you've been struggling with hormonal balance, uh, weight loss might not be linear. Initially, you might not see that drop on the scale. Um, and you may notice other signs that your metabolism is improving. Like you have more energy levels, you have fewer cravings, you have more stable moods or better digestion. These are great shifts and they indicate that your body is becoming more responsive to the nutrients you're giving it and it's better able to regulate your hormones. So focus on that first and foremost. And I know you want to lose weight and that's okay. But it's not just about eating less and moving more um, because that approach completely ignores that we have hormones within us that regulate our metabolism. And if your body is metabolically not healthy, eating too little can backfire in the long run because it increases your cortisol levels and increases your hunger hormones. It slows down your thyroid function. And a body in that state holds on to fat instead of releasing it. So instead of focusing on as little as possible, the goal is to be eating enough of the right nutrients to support hormonal balance, stable blood sugar, and strong metabolism. Calories are a source of energy and your body needs enough fuel to ovulate, regulate your cycle, and sustain a pregnancy. To lose weight, you must be in a calorie deficit. There is no way around it. This is a fundamental principle of thermodynamics. But... How your body responds to a calorie deficit depends on metabolic health, hormonal balance, and stress levels. Now, when calorie intake is too low for too long, the body doesn't hold on to weight in a mystical way, but it just simply adapts to slowing down certain processes to conserve energy. So your metabolism adjusts to lower calorie intake by reducing how much energy it burns. Your resting metabolic rate may decrease and spontaneous movement and activity levels just may drop and key hormones like thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, may downregulate, all of which make just weight loss incredibly hard. This is why some women feel like the body is just pretty much resisting weight loss. But it's not that fat loss is impossible, but it's Rather, that the body is adjusting its energy expenditure to match the intake. And when you're chronically stressed, that can also play a role. When cortisol is elevated for long periods due to stress, over-exercising or under-eating, over-eating, yes, that can also raise cortisol levels. Then it can influence fat distribution, particularly around the midsection. And high cortisol levels can also impact blood sugar balance and insulin sensitivity, which can then lead to increased cravings and difficulty maintaining a consistent deficit. However, cortisol itself doesn't block weight loss. If a calorie deficit is maintained for a long period of time and you are in that damn deficit, fat loss will still happen. But the body 
may hold on to more fat in certain areas due to hormonal signaling. And for some women, when they start on that journey and eat better, they may see weight reduction fairly quickly within a few weeks, especially when they address inflammation and especially if that is a major factor for them. So then the body might release the excess water and doesn't hold on to that anymore. But for other women, especially when you have PCAs, insulin resistance or a thyroid dysfunction, it can take a bit longer because all of these conditions affect how efficiently your body burns calories and also how it regulates your hunger signals. You might feel hungry all the time or that your body actually doesn't need those extra calories. And in these cases, weight loss isn't just about eating less. It's about, first and foremost, improving your metabolic flexibility, balancing your blood sugar and optimizing your hormones to make it much easier for you to lose fat. This is why I tell you, focus on nourishment rather than extreme restriction. And yes, again, you need to be in a calorie deficit for fat loss. It's, there's no way around it, but how you create the deficit matters. So if you slash calories too, too badly, your body fights back with increased hunger, lower energy and hormonal shifts that make long-term fat loss so much harder. The goal isn't to eat as little as possible. The goal is to fuel your body properly while maintaining a moderate and sustainable deficit. If you follow the program, the 12-week program to a T, it's going to be pretty much impossible to not lose weight. So give it a go, give your body a bit of time, give yourself those three months, you will lose weight. It's going to be a byproduct.